Hi everyone, I'm Chill and welcome back to another Detailed Champion Guide. Today I'll be talking about Bako, the hero of Boulder Pass, and so please sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Bako is a tanky melee champion who excels in controlling and disrupting enemies in a fight with his axe and shield. He has some decent damage abilities both in melee and range scenarios and so he can dish out some decent damage if left unchecked for a while. In terms of mobility, he has quite a few ways of moving about the battlefield while damaging people and so this really helps him fulfill his disruptor role in the round quite well. His range of control and utility abilities is what I think makes him shine the most and so definitely use them to your advantage whenever you can. While Bako's abilities are simple and straightforward mostly, I think he's not entirely a beginner friendly champion because he needs some knowledge of what other champions can do to really gauge when and where he should pick a fight. Lots of care and consideration has to go into playing Bako effectively I think, for reasons I will mention later in the video. And so it might take a while to really get used to what Bako can do if you wish to learn how to play him as a beginner. So yeah, before we start, just like the other champion guides I have made previously for Sirius and Blossom to name a few, I have split this guide up into the different sections and I have included timestamps directly to each section in the description below. As usual, feel free to skip ahead to the section that you need if you've already watched the video before. And again, we will start the guide off with looking at Bako's abilities before we talk about his playstyle, strengths and weaknesses. Then we'll look at his battle right options and finally we'll finish off with some of my gameplay tips and potential combos when using Bako. And so without further ado, let's begin. First off, let's talk about his abilities one by one. Bako's left click ability is 4 axe and this is his basic melee attack ability. What it does is Bako will hit an enemy in front of him for some decent melee damage with each successful hit reducing the cooldown of his mouse 2 by a bit and also granting him some weapon charges. The weapon charges go up to a maximum of 3 and these weapon charges can boost the damage of his mouse 2 ability. Pretty simple stuff. Next up, Bako's Mouse 2 ability is Blood Axe and this is his main range poke ability. What it does is Bako will simply throw an axe projectile forward, dealing 16 damage when it successfully hits an enemy. This amount is pretty huge and so this makes Bako quite formidable at a distance as well. For each weapon charge that Bako has when he casts his Mouse 2 ability, 4 bonus damage is dealt to the target which can add up to be quite a lot by the way. For this reason, try not to miss your axe when you have weapon charges since it's quite a lot of wasted damage. Because of the cooldown reduction with each mouse 1 hit, every time you use mouse 2 followed by 3 mouse 1 hits, you will be able to use mouse 2 again, so that's something to keep in mind. Moving on, Bako's spacebar ability is his main movement ability, Valiant Leap. What it does is Bako will jump into the air for some time, and then he will land at a targeted location, dealing a large amount of damage onto all enemies within the area. Enemies caught in the area will also get snapped for 1 second, so this ability has some added control effects as well in addition to the damage. Because there's a little vacuum effect upon landing, this jump ability can actually interrupt casting, so it's quite useful against enemies who are countering or channeling some sort of ability. It's important to note that Bako is invulnerable while jumping, and so you can use this ability just for that brief moment of invulnerability to dodge certain damaging abilities. Next up, Bako's Q ability is his trademark shield ability, Bulwark. What it does is Bako will hold up his big barrier, which when hit will stun melee attackers for 1.5 seconds and reflect incoming projectiles back toward ranged attackers. This ability defines Bako I feel, and it is why he is able to be so disruptive to the enemy. Timing this ability will result in reflected attacks, stun melee enemies and all that, basically just being a nuisance to the enemy team. Most experienced players will be expecting a shield of some sort from Bako, so it's quite important to time it right and try to use it reactively rather than using it too early. Moving on, Bako's E ability is Shield Dash, and this is another one of his mobility and control abilities. What it does is that Bako will dash forward, and if he hits any enemy units, he will push the enemy along as well until they both reach the maximum charge distance. If the charge doesn't hit a wall, then there is no damage done to the enemy, but it does still interrupt spell casting, I believe. If the enemy is charged into a wall, then the enemy will also be dealt some damage upon impact, which I think is pretty good. This of course means that in maps where there are more walls, Bako's damage potential is better, so he certainly shines more in some maps more than others. So those were all of Bako's abilities that doesn't require energy. Now let us talk about those which do. Bako's R ability is War Shout, and this is his shield ability. By shield I mean a health shield, not really a barrier like his Q ability. 
This ability costs 25 energy, and what it does is Buckle will let out a shout, and all allies including himself in a certain radius around him will receive a shield that can absorb up to 40 damage. This ability is a really good way of keeping your team alive, especially if you can time it just before massive AoE abilities or painful combos that enemies might pull off. 40 damage is a large amount of damage that can be negated, so definitely don't hesitate to use this ability if you find yourself in a tight spot and your escape cooldowns are not ready. Also, using it on yourself only without your teammates there makes the ability lose some of its value, but in emergencies, it's completely okay as well, so don't hesitate to use it. Moving on, Bako's first EX ability is his shift spacebar ability, War Stomp. This EX ability costs 25 energy, and what it does is that it modifies Bako's spacebar ability so that it incapacitates all enemies in the landing area, instead of just snaring them. The drawback of this ability as compared to the normal spacebar ability is the lower damage that it does, but of course the incapacitate effect is way stronger than the snare effect of the normal ability. This ability is another reason why Bako is so good at disrupting enemies, since the jump duration of this ability is actually quite a bit faster than the normal spacebar ability, and so it is less likely for enemies to be able to dodge the incapacitate effect. If enemies stack up near one another, this ability can easily incapacitate more than one enemy, which would in turn allow Bako's team to combo their abilities together, to really punish the incapacitated enemies. So yeah, really strong ability indeed. Moving on, Bako's second EX ability is his Shift E ability, Shield Slam. For 25 energy, Bako can use this ability to dash forward just like his normal E ability, and if it hits an enemy, the target is dealt some damage, inflicted with a 2.5 second fading snare, and they are also sent flying backwards. This ability can be pretty useful at creating space for teammates, since this ability alone would often make it hard for enemy champions to catch up to your teammates again. Not only that, if you are out of escape options as Bako as well, this ability can be useful to get enemy melee champions off of you with the knockback effect of this ability. So yeah, pretty useful I would say. And finally, last but not least is Bako's ultimate ability on the F key, Heroic Charge. What Bako's ultimate ability does is that Bako will charge forward and grab an enemy as he is charging forward if he happens to hit them with the charge. The enemy is dealt a good amount of damage upon being grabbed and when Bako and the target finally reaches the max distance of the charge or when they collide against another wall or enemy target, Bako will slam the area around him to deal some more AoE damage, as well as stun all enemies in the area around him for a short while as well. So yeah, pretty strong ultimate damage wise. It can certainly turn fights around quite easily if enemies are caught off guard, so it is sometimes worth it to save some energy for your ultimate ability if you can. But even having said that, don't hesitate to spend some energy using some of your other abilities as well if you need them, since they are just as good as well. And so that's about it for Bako's abilities. Now let us move on to his playstyle, strengths and weaknesses. Bako's playstyle is a bit more of a back and forth kind of playstyle, and I think that he also needs to adopt a mindset where he is trying to disrupt enemies and control the fight, rather than a mindset where he's trying to jump in and hit things. The reason why I say this is because he doesn't really have any form of self-sustain outside of his R ability, and so he cannot really trade hits very well against other enemies. Most of his damage comes from his burst T, mouse 2 ability, space bar, E into a wall and so on, and that's why he has this back and forth type of playstyle. His abilities help him to become more of a disruptor rather than brawler type of champion, even though his first impression is that of a brawler. I couldn't figure out how to play him effectively at the start, until I thought of myself as this guy who could just jump in, annoy my enemies for a few seconds and run out kind of thing, and when I started to play that way, is when I started to become more effective with him I feel. So yeah, getting the right mindset when playing with Bako is quite important to me. Because Bako's abilities are quite versatile, there is no set way of playing him, and the abilities he chooses to use at various points in the time in the match will depend on the matchup as well. If I try to do my best to generalize though, I'll typically be trying to poke enemies from afar with my mouse 2 ability whenever it is off cooldown. If against ranged enemies, I'll try to make sure I win the mind games and successfully reflect their strong projectile attacks if I can. If my teammates or myself manage to force the enemy escape cooldowns to be wasted, then this would be a good time to use spacebar to jump in and try to do some damage. Preferably, you would try to jump to such a position where the enemy would end up between you and a wall, and so this would allow you to use E onto an enemy and charge them into a wall. A charge into a wall followed by a mouse 2 is a typical combo that can be done for some decent damage, and so you could try to mouse 2 right after charging an enemy into a wall as well. During this time, if you have your Q ready and you expect your enemy to retaliate, putting your Q up has a good chance of successfully stunning the melee enemy or reflecting the ranged attack because the enemy is in a slightly panicked state when engaged down like that. 
If you don't expect them to retaliate, then it would just be a case of mouse 1 3 times followed by a mouse 2 and so on until they run away I suppose. It's fairly important to remember that Bako cannot trade very well if he is not protected by his shield from his R ability and so you want to use his R ability if you expect to be in a prolonged brawl against the enemies. Without a support champion in the team, Bako cannot sustain his health pool if he plays too aggressively and so you should definitely consider backing away for a bit if you feel you have outstayed your welcome in enemy territory. At any time, if I see my teammate is winning a trade against another opponent somewhere, I'll try to make sure that the other enemies would not interfere with them, since I would want my teammate to continue winning those trades. And so my line of thinking should be on how I would be able to disrupt and distract the other enemies so that they wouldn't be able to try to help their teammate. I have some options like using EX space onto them to in-cap, or perhaps EXE onto them to push them away and so on. Putting yourself in between the two enemy champions is also a good way to do this, I would say, because enemies will typically be wary of your bulwark ability and will be hesitant to just simply shoot at your teammate's direction. Even if you don't decide to use your Q ability, it is a good enough deterrent, I would say. So yeah, I pretty much listed a whole load of scenarios where you could potentially try to do something with Bako. Those are not all the possible scenarios in an actual match for obvious reasons, but those are just some of the more common ones, I would say. There are some which I haven't mentioned as well, like how you could perhaps use spacebar or E to interrupt channeling abilities, or using R to shield your team from damaging abilities and so on, but those are slightly more uncommon I think as compared to some of those I listed earlier. You can tell that it's almost impossible to really define how Bako should be played, and my advice to playing Bako is really to just be creative with his abilities and to be unpredictable. That way, he will cause a lot of annoyance to the enemy team I think. You definitely need to fully understand what each of his abilities do to play Bako properly, so make sure you take some time to do that when you can. On to some of his strengths, I think that one of Bako's strengths is his long range poke potential. Bako, even as a melee champion, has one of the better range poking abilities. His Blood Axe or Moss 2 ability is quite strong, and it has a short cast time and cooldown, so it's no surprise that it would be constantly spammed. Couple that with his ability to jump a large distance with his spacebar ability, and also his ability to reflect projectiles back at enemies, he can be quite a threat even at a distance I would say. Next up, I think that Bako is really good at applying pressure and interrupting enemies I feel. Bako's spacebar ability interrupts casting when he lands, his E ability interrupts casting and displaces enemies when he charges at them, his Q ability reflects projectiles and stuns melee attackers, his ultimate ability charges, displaces and stuns people. Almost all of his abilities have some sort of control effect on their enemies and that is why Bako is best played as a disruptor and this is his real strength I feel. Finally, I think that Bako is a lot stronger in maps where there are lots of walls everywhere. A decent amount of Bako's damage potential comes from him being able to pin people to the wall, and so in maps where there are lots of walls, Bako can perform and deal quite a bit more damage. When we get to his Batterites later, there's actually a Batterite which makes it so that his E abilities stun the enemy should they get knocked into a wall, and so those Batterites also increase in value quite a bit in those maps. However, with that being said, while it is nice to be stronger in maps with lots of walls, I suppose it is also a weakness as well. Bako wouldn't perform as good as he could be in maps with bigger open spaces like Dragon Garden, and so I would say that the interaction of his abilities with walls is also one of his weaknesses, because he doesn't have enough walls to easily charge enemies into. Moving on, I think that Bako is also a little bit weaker against other melee champions. While he does have decent melee attack damage and he has some ways of dealing with them like with his Q stun or his R for shields to survive better. I think that he lacks a little bit when trying to trade with others because he doesn't have any self healing and he also has to aim his mouse to to keep up in terms of damage against the opponent. It can be quite easy to sometimes miss his mouse to with 2 or 3 weapon charges because melee enemies often dance around their target a little bit and are trying to be unpredictable. The pressure is on Bako to really make the most out of the mouse tools since he would lose out in terms of damage if he misses and he loses out in terms of health as well since he has no healing. So yeah, it can sometimes be quite tough to trade melee blows against other more self-sufficient melee enemies I feel. Finally, another weakness of Bako's is that I think it might sometimes be easy to overextend a little bit too much as Bako. His abilities are obviously very in your face kind of abilities and so he does need to get up close and personal quite frequently if he wants to do decent damage to enemies. Careless players might not realise when they should be backing away instead of chasing some more and so it can be easy to get caught out of position as a result. So yeah, always try to assess the danger levels especially when playing with a melee champion with no self healing capabilities. And so that's about it for his playstyles, strengths and weaknesses. Now let us move on to Bako's best right options. 
Once again, you can pause the video to slowly read through every single battle right if you wish before I go through my thoughts on his battle rights, since it will take a long while for me to read it all out for you. And so pause now to read them all. Okay, now that you've read them all, let's continue. In the first tier, I think that all three choices are actually pretty good. Typically, if I'm against all ranged enemies, then I'll pick Volod's Axe for the increased long range poke potential. The extra damage and snare effect on the mouse too really helps when dealing with those pesky ranged champions who will always try to be out of your reach. Against multiple brawler type of melee champions, Shield Bash can be a pretty good pickup purely because of the weakened debuff that it puts on enemy champions. The range of the shield bash is quite short, and so it wouldn't really be useful against ranged enemies, but against melee enemies, I think it's quite okay too actually. If you don't need the other two battle rights for those reasons I mentioned, then Raging Ram can actually be a pretty good pickup all around, perhaps even in maps with not as many walls. The reduced cooldown makes it that much more spammable, and furthermore the increased travel distance also helps you hit those wall hits in maps with not a lot of walls. So yeah, when in doubt, I guess you could just pick Raging Ram. Pretty good battle rights this tier. In the second tier, I think that Wall Slam would be the best pick most of the time. Adrenaline Rush seems good in theory, since it gives quite a bit of good damage if you manage to pull off a space bar into Mouse 1 combo, but I feel like the stun you get on the enemy when you charge them into a wall just gives a lot more utility to Bako. The stun you get from charging enemies into the wall will usually be long enough that you can mouse to them after that, and so the wall slam battle right also technically gives you some good damage. Another thing to point out is that you'll need your enemy to have used up all their escapes before you jump them for adrenaline rush to be worth it, but a wall slam is always good as long as there's a wall nearby. The red axe is one of the only ways Bako can regain health and I think it is actually quite okay, but once again the stun from wall slam is usually too good to pass up. I suppose if you are fighting against all ranged enemies and you picked Warlord's Axe in the first round, then maybe the Red Axe could be a good enough pickup. But then again, you will also hardly be able to land enough Mouse 1 hits to really get enough charges to really get large heals from the battle right. And so that's why I think the Red Axe is mostly just okay compared to War Slam. On to the third tier, I think that all three choices are actually quite decent again. Against multiple melee enemies, if you feel that your teammate might get focused or something, then bravery can be pretty good at keeping your team alive. Because not only does your space bar interrupt those melee enemies, now you and your team will also get a defense buff. If you don't think that melee enemies will try to rush down a single teammate, then Rampage is a decent pickup so that you can increase your damage while you have your shield up from your R ability. The attack speed and movement speed buff is quite significant and can increase your damage output quite a bit helping you to win those traits more easily basically. Against mixed compositions or all range enemy compositions, I like to take mobile defense. The increased movement speed when you use Bulwark really helps you to intercept and reflect projectiles back at the enemies. It can also be really helpful as another escape cooldown basically, since you can just run out of almost anything. You could even use it for chasing down enemies as well if you need to, or just perhaps reposition and regroup with your teammate with it. So yeah, I think that the battle right is really quite versatile, and it is quite a good general pickup if you don't really need the effects of the other battle right specifically. On to the 4th tier, uh, some good choices once again. Axe and Shield is I think a good pickup if you are hitting enemies with your mouse one a lot. Typically this would be when you're up against multiple melee enemies, and so I would consider picking it up if you took Rampage in the 3rd round maybe. Your bulwark will be up fairly often, and you can use it often to stun your attackers pretty much. If you're up against multiple ranged enemies and you took Warlord's Axe in the first round, then Howling Axis is a very attractive battle right choice, since you'll be able to chain together multiple mouse tools for some really good long range poke damage. Outside of those scenarios, or if you think you don't really need the other battle rights in those cases, Inspiration will always be good, regardless of the situation and matchup. The increased maximum energy and energy gain is tremendously useful for Bako, since every ability of his is useful to his game plan. Bako is extremely reactionary as a champion, and so having some more energy to react to different situations is ideal I would say. And so because of this, definitely pick up inspiration if you're not too sure if you get value out of the other two battle rights I think. Being able to eventually save up enough energy to use your ultimate is a pretty good thing as well, so inspiration is really really good overall to me. Finally, in the 5th and final tier, I think it will mostly be a choice depending on what you feel you need more. If you're having trouble surviving some rounds, then reinforcement will help you with that when you do manage to use your ultimate. If you're having troubles finishing off opponents due to lack of damage, or maybe due to the fact that your opponents have multiple support champions, then maybe Mammoth Storm could be the difference maker which will allow you to secure kills. So it really just depends on what you need really at the round, because both battle rates are pretty solid. 
And so yeah, that's about it on Bako's battle rights. Now let us move on to some of my gameplay tips for playing Bako, as well as some potential combos with him. My first tip for playing Bako is to really get used to throwing his axe, get used to the range of his E ability charge, and to get used to reactively using his Q ability. Because those abilities are a huge part of Bako's usefulness as a champion, it can be quite difficult to make the most out of Bako's potential if you don't have proper practice with those abilities, and so I definitely recommend trying to make it a point to practice hitting all of those things consistently. The more you practice getting used to the cast time of his axe and all that sort of stuff, you'll find that slowly you are starting to do more and more damage as Bako. Next up, another tip I have for playing Bako is to focus harder on anticipating what enemies are doing and try to react accordingly so that you'll be in the right place at the right times to maximize the chances of your abilities doing what they are meant to do. I suppose this could be said for almost every other champion as well in the game, but it is true for Bako more so than the other champions I feel. To me, Bako is a disruptor, as I've mentioned a few times in this video already, and so I feel he needs to be ready to interrupt or just stop the enemies from doing whatever they had planned to do. Being able to accurately anticipate what enemies do will ultimately allow you to quickly and correctly plan ahead how the fight is going to go and what are the best abilities to use in each situation. When you're able to plan ahead and correctly anticipate moves, hitting your abilities with Bako will be quite a lot easier, and so definitely try to focus when you're playing Bako. Moving on, another tip I have for playing Bako is to think of him as a defender of sorts as well. He's quite a good champion to use when you're trying to protect a teammate, and so he can often shine when trying to peel for teammates as well. Oftentimes, when you find your teammate being overwhelmed, there's no use trying to keep chasing enemies down as Bako because you may not be able to kill the enemy before they kill your teammate. Bako is just not the kind of champion with incredibly high damage output except in the ideal scenarios, and so it is probably more worth it to try to protect your teammate and stop them from getting further damage instead of just letting them fend for themselves. After all, this game is somewhat of a team game as well, and so you'll definitely want to try to work as a team when playing Bako. On to some combos, while Bako's damage potential does benefit from performing some form of combos, I usually prefer to use his abilities as necessary instead, since he isn't really the sort of champion that should entirely focus on doing the maximum damage within the shortest amount of time. Having said that though, I will still maybe list down some basic combos that would be useful in most cases and will most likely be able to be chained together in most normal matches. So yeah. A nice basic combo which you may have picked up on would be to jump with spacebar followed by an E charge into a wall. People who would have used an escape cooldown to get out of your jump AOE would have done so already and so your best bet in hitting them against the wall would be with your E ability right after landing. If you took the battle right which lets you stun the enemy that you charge into a wall, you can also follow it up with an almost guaranteed mouse to hit on the enemy for even more damage as well. So that's technically another basic combo. This same combo can actually be done with your EXE ability as well. Knocking an enemy back into a wall will also stun them even when you use your EXE ability and so you can easily follow it up with the mouse too as well. Do bear in mind though that the projectile needs some time to reach the target so the enemy might be able to jump out in time to avoid the X. Against melee enemies, you can sometimes raise your shield with Q, stun them for 1.5 seconds and quickly cancel your Q ability with C or whichever button you use for cancelling your abilities, and this will allow you to make use of that 1.5 second stun duration, and perhaps get some hits in or charge them into a wall or something, so that's quite handy to keep in mind as well. So yeah, those were just some of the basic combos with Bako, definitely use them but don't be too over reliant on them and like save up your abilities just to do a certain combo and whatnot because that's not how to play Bako. On to some good pairings with Bako, I find that he goes well with ranged champions, whether DPS or support, more so than melee champions. Some ranged champions often require teammates to help them peel from enemy champions, and so having Bako do that job is really good since he's pretty good at doing that. Because he mostly doesn't have any self-healing in his kit as well, having a support teammate to heal up any damage that's been taken is also pretty handy. There's a very mutual relationship that goes on between a Bako and a support teammate because supports heal Bako and Bako protects them, so it's kinda nice that way. Melee teammates are fine with Bako, but as with all multiple melee compositions, melee teammates sometimes get in each other's way and so I don't think it's really the best especially since you'll be charging around and all that with Bako, and trying to aim your mouse tools at point blank range. It's just kind of messy to me. So yeah, generally, Bako is quite an interesting champion to play. I think it's really fun, just make sure that you have the right mindset when you play with him and it should be all okay. 
Just kind of imagine you're the older brother to your teammate and you want to protect them or something. And also look out for chances when you get to interrupt your enemies, annoy them, those sort of things. Bako isn't exactly that easy to play, but he isn't very hard as well. And so just give it some time, practice with him for a bit and you'll eventually be able to play him well I feel. And so yeah, that's about it for my Bako guide. I hope you found it useful. The next guide I have in line from the poll in my series guide will be a Varish guide and so you can definitely look forward to that. Since the choice was only between Varish and Iva, all that's left is an Iva guide that will come after Varish's guide. I hope you look forward to that as well. All in all, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please subscribe to the channel, like it, comment on it, share this video and you can check out my other videos as well if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching my video and until next time guys, keep on gaming, stay chill and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Thank you.